What we have here are two of the newest entrants to the Hot Hatch Brigade, and they are quite similar in a lot of ways. Both use turbo power, they have a very similar power to weight ratio, and they're both the ultimate expression of what their makers can do in this segment. But having said that, they're also quite different. If you look at the Ford all-wheel drive, really trying to punch a little bit above its weight with some of the premium ultra hatches out there. The uh, Honda, of course, looking quite wild, but it's actually perhaps more an everyday kind of um, hot hatch, and it is also front-wheel drive. And now we're at one of South Africa's best driving roads to find out which recipe suits this kind of driving best. Should be fun. The mountains of Mpumalanga are a superb proving ground for any car, with a blend of open straights and tight twists over thrilling elevation changes, and the scenery isn't too bad either. It was a test of which was the more engaging car to drive in these conditions, and we were particularly interested in finding out how the Civic Type R's front-wheel drive compared to the Focus RS's all-wheel drive on some really testing roads. The Focus RS is the more subtle of the two options, but it still has elements that leave little doubt about its driving intentions. It takes the Focus recipe and sharpens it, and the result is a muscular hatch that has a bit of aggression. That is a little bit washed out when parked next to this car, but only because it is completely over the top. Gills, huge wheels, a massive rear wing. A lot of this car's parts wouldn't look out of place in an aftermarket accessories catalogue. It's not going to be everyone's choice, and it certainly is the extrovert option. While all of that may sound like we don't like the styling of the Civic Type R, that's not really the case. All that shoutiness really suits this car's character. Its unmistakable look is backed up by a proper ability that at the same time has a not very subtle hooligan edge to it. Where the Type R looks lean and athletic, the Focus RS is more muscular. Gaping front air dams and blue calipers are obvious indicators that this is a hatch with real performance intent. expect performance cars to have racy interiors and that's true of both of these hatchbacks. So you'll get bucket seats, you'll get thick rimmed grip steering wheels and you'll get a sporty driving position. If you look at the Ford, perhaps the more understated of the two, it uh, looks in fact quite standard if you don't look at those Recaro bucket seats. And of course, no surprise that the Honda is the over the top car as far as the interior is concerned as well. Very bright red colouring, red illumination, there is nothing subtle about this car. Those performance interior attributes aren't at the expense of comfort though. Both machines are well specced and easy to operate and both remained comfortable over the distances covered from Johannesburg to Mpumalanga and back. The layout of the Focus RS is arguably the less user-friendly of the two, but only fractionally so, and also only because of its reliance on buttons, rather than the cleaner, more modern approach of the Honda's touchscreen setup. Materials and build quality in both are solid, with a harder ride setup failing to uncover any rattles or squeaks. Both cars are designed to deliver a sporty, engaging drive, but their manufacturer's approach to that mission is a little bit different. The Ford packs a 2.3-litre four-cylinder turbo, cranking out an impressive 257 kilowatts, 440 newton meters. And although its top speed is lower than the Type R's, its 0 to 100 time is a full second quicker, and that's thanks in part to its all-wheel drive. The Civic Type R is lighter than the Ford, but it also has a smaller 2-litre four-cylinder turbocharged engine rated at 228 kilowatt of maximum power and 400 newton meters of torque. Being front-wheel drive only, it doesn't get its power down onto the road as efficiently as the Ford, but it still manages a 0-200 time of under 6 seconds. And both these cars, by the way, have got manual gearboxes, which proves that they are true driving machines. Driving machines that were given some space to run and some space to show off just what they could deliver outside the confines of city congestion and traffic light sprints. There wasn't going to be too much question about the power on offer from either the Ford or the Honda. The turbo engines wouldn't suffer from any altitude sickness and their similar power to weight ratios would mean they felt equally strong in the short bursts between corners. 
As much as Spike is a fan of the Honda, even he'll have to admit that when it comes to outright handling and grip, the car to go for is the Focus RS. And of course, the reason for that, very simple, it is all-wheel drive and a very good iteration of all-wheel drive as well because this car doesn't suffer from that sort of nose heaviness or the four-wheel drift. It feels very sharp, very crisp, very responsive. And it's just one of those cars that builds confidence as you drive it. You really enjoy a mountain pass and twisties in the Focus because it's an engaging drive and that's what a performance hatch should be all about. Of course, a lot of power here as well and you really get to that point where you can balance the car with power and steering to absolutely brilliant and very satisfying effect. That power, of course, also means that it's very quick in the straight line, but for me, this car is all about tackling the twisties. Ford's intention is that this car has rear-wheel drive feel with front-wheel drive control. To that end, up to 70% of the power can be sent to the rear axle, and from there, a vectoring system can further split the torque between each back wheel. It's a seamless system that helps deliver grip aplenty and makes the focus particularly thrilling when pressing on. I mean, technically, yes, the RS is a better car. It's got a bigger motor with more power. It's got all-wheel drive with more grip. In fact, about the only thing it doesn't have more of is exhaust pipes. But there is something really special about this car and the way it makes you feel when you're driving it. It's very, very involving. The steering feels good. It's got a good slick shift action. And every time you put it into a corner, it just sticks to the line and sees you through to the other side. And it gives you massive confidence. It's a confidence you wouldn't necessarily expect from a car with a front-wheel drive layout, but the more you push it, the more the Type R seems to enjoy it. Added to the sure-footed ability is a power delivery that provides satisfying acceleration when you need it, making the Type R a car that's quick and very capable. So, having spent a fair amount of time driving some of South Africa's best roads in two pretty brilliant performance hatchbacks, the question is, which one would you choose? Well, I know that I probably should go for the RS because it is more powerful and it's got all-wheel drive, but there is just a magic about this car that I really, really enjoy. The fact that you can put it into a corner, it sticks to the chosen line, the diff in this car is phenomenal, it gives it great handling and a lot of enjoyment. I really like this car a lot. I'm guessing you're going to go for the RS though. Yeah, from my point of view, I mean, these are actually not just hot hatches, they are super hatches. From that point of view, this is the quicker car, point to point. It certainly has a lot more traction. The four-wheel drive system works really well. And I really like the engine. Uh, it, it has a, a lot of linearity for a turbo, and it sounds fantastic as well. I also like the fact that this car is a little bit more understated than the Honda. I knew you'd go there, I knew you'd go there. <laughs> yes, it's overstated, but it shouts about what it's about. Everybody knows what this car is about. This car is just a little bit too subtle. The keyword is shout, you see. So this is nice and understated. It does, it goes about its business in a stealthy kind of way, I suppose. Um, but it is very satisfying to drive. And the only problem with this car, of course, the asking price, 700,000 Rand for a Focus is just a little bit much to swallow. Yeah, I think so too. So I'm gonna do is gonna keep my 80 grand in the pocket and I'll uh, see you back in Joburg. No, you won't, I'll be far ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> With 257 kilowatt from its four-cylinder motor, the Focus RS delivers impressive power and a sub five second zero to 100 sprint time. But it's the car's grip that impresses most, allowing for brilliant handling without the loss of fuel so often associated with all-wheel drive. But its 700,000 Rand price tag means it'll be a rare pleasure. The Honda makes do with a smaller motor and less power, and some would say it overcompensates for that with ludicrously loud styling. Like the RS, it's the handling in the Type R that impresses, but for different reasons. The front-wheel drive layout combines grip and accuracy for a confidence-inspiring, thoroughly involving drive. <laughs> 